rapper right take two. He is the reason why I'm at the inspired word. Only because when I first came to their show to support a friend of mine who was featuring, and I walked into the room at the one and one in that room, you know that room, that room is funky. But I saw him hosting, and my first thought was, if this cat is down with the program, this must be legit, all right? And he coached me out of retirement, because he said, Nathan P, I haven't seen you in a number of years, because I haven't been on the scene in a number of years. And he said, hey, you ever think about filling in and guest hosting? And I said, yes, that was that little line you have me at, hello, right? That's why I love this cat. Oh, by the way, I'll be remiss if I didn't shout out Nico, our sound and light guy. Give me Nico some love. Yeah. Because he's a brother that's making my bow tie look double-sided. Because this is really a piece of cardboard. Now, this cat, he's a poet and a spoken word artist. He's an author, because he put out his book for poetry. He is a teacher. He is one of the founding members of one of the hottest poetry groups in existence, El Grito de Poeta. He is a videographer, a filmmaker, a director. This man, anything involving words, he's all about. And that's apropos, because that's in his name. He was one of the original hosts of the Inspired Word, and it's only fitting that he kicks off the night because he hosted the first anniversary show and he continues to host the comedy slam throughout the year. He's about to come up here and do his thing. So what I need you to do to start. Congrats, Inspired Word. Congrats, Marvin, Mike, everyone in the family. In New York City, there were a lot of people who tried to do poetry open mics and events. And after a year, we don't hear about them anymore. So it's awesome that you got to four years. And let's give a hand one more time for Mr. Nathan P., the coolest host in the world. It's as if she could walk on air. Her voice alone would make people move, smile, and laugh, even if they don't understand the single word she's saying. She puts the river in my torso and waterfalls in my eyes, running vibrations through my arteries, pumped out of my chakras, calling on all primal and spiritual instincts. She is possessive. She is sequacious. She is salsa. I began to study her language on my own. Over the course of burnt books and charcoal artistry, I found remnants of the childhood of her grandparents. Gramps and his Bantu dialect was learning how to harness these drums called a makuta, a yuka, and a bembe. Grandma was charming la clave and teaching wires how to manipulate sound. They had met during the slave trade that brought the people from the Congo over to Hispaniola and took the, the, present, uh, the population of the present indigenous people of the Western Hemisphere over to Africa. They found rhythm in the oceans. Abuelitos percussions would ward off evil spirits and Abuelitas melody would string along good luck and peace. The courting period lasted for centuries. In the late 1800s, Spanish colonial rule over the island we now know as Cuba had banned all African instruments, thus giving way for the Ngoma drum to be remixed, refurnished, remade, and today we call this drum the conga, its name paying homage to his homeland's forefathers. Fast forward a half a century later, crony capitalists fell victim to its seduction. Now the music never assimilated, but got its American roots during the Prohibition era. Rich United States citizens would fly down to the Caribbean so that they could legally drink, and these bars would showcase the culture's art. The Yankee was intimidated, the Yankee was seduced, had to have it. A few unofficial and unofficial occupations later, a few official and unofficial drafts and into the war later, and these same palms that have been keeping my people in rhythm and in tune was sent to this city to shine its streets paved with gold. Most 
fight fire with fire, but we have always battled the enemy with love. This music was our Jackie Robinson breaking segregated barriers before there was Don Omar or Mark Anthony or Rico Suave. It was Tito Puente. Tito mm -hmm. Rodriguez, Mirito Valdez, and the rapid tides of racism were shifting, and the whites only palladium opened its doors to the cha cha, the Argentine tango, the Cuba, rumba, racango, and mambo, which all began to blend and created salsa. Y canto la vida de risas y penas, de momentos malos. Here cosas buenas It defined mi corazón La arma y amor Of who I am For soy Latino And I invite you all to share with me One of my ancestors' most gorgeous creations Salsa Feel free to cancel tonight. Right now, for all you football fans, when you're watching the Giants and Cruz makes a touchdown, you understand where it comes from. Um, so real quick, I'm going to do another small uh, poem. Uh, you know, six to eight minutes, and I'm probably not going to take all that up. So I hope everyone enjoys the